Good morning everyone. Hi, hello, my name is EJ and I am back again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to take a look at and, you know, hopefully learn a thing or two from. I typically record my art process and at some point in time I edit it and re-watch it again and while I'm watching it I make commentaries on it so that it could serve hopefully as a lesson for some people who is new to digital painting slash painting in general so yeah i give pretty much general art tips while i'm watching my videos so uh today we are taking a look at a photo study that i did from mapcrunch again i've mentioned this before mapcrunch is a very great website a very great tool for artists to use mapcrunch basically is a website that simply takes you to a random location anywhere in the world using google maps <laughs> very very handle tool you press the go button that we see we actually could see the go button on the screen right now but you pretty much just press the go button and it just boom takes you to a random spot and so this is how i ended up with this particular photo study or photo I ended up basically in a random place somewhere in the Middle East. If I'm not wrong, I think this is somewhere in the Middle East. I could be wrong. It could be in Texas for all I know. <laughs> but um, from if from what I believe or from what I do remember, because um, this was done a while back, this was done in... 2020 of last year so this was uh done last year basically august of last year and yeah from what i remember it, it was some random location in the middle east but i could be wrong it I, I can't exactly quite read what's what the location is on that on the map crunch photo right now because it's too small but regardless, <laughs> the point is that I ended up with this very, very interesting photo to do a photo study from. And originally, I was just going to do a photo study, but I did see the potential for a composition out of this particular photo. So I went ahead and just decided to, yeah, just go off on the pen and just kind of just did my own thing after I did this quick outline sketch of, you know, the general shape of the plane which is pretty much just what i just did just now i just quickly sketch out the general shape of the plane general shape of the air hanger in the back of the plane and obviously i also did i also went ahead and did real quick sketches general shape patterns of the foreground characters so yeah um Again, like I said, when I saw the photo, I saw the composition in my head. And so basically the composition in my head is pretty much what the ending piece was, which is there's a bunch of paratroopers that looks like they're about to get on a plane. They're doing, uh, whether they're military or not, I, I actually intended for the characters to be military of nature and whatnot. Whether it reads as military, it's not really clear. Um, but either way, the, the idea behind it is that there's a bunch of paratroopers about to either practice their jump routine or do some form of test. Really, honestly, the way I have it in my head is that they're performing some form of of scientific, not scientific test, but uh, a tool test. Um, it's not very obvious in the composition itself because the it, the character is way so. <laughs> Let me backtrack. I'm like getting way too ahead of myself, and my train of thought is everywhere. Okay, let me go talk real quick about the particular the the title of the piece. The title of the piece is Prophet. Uh, 6 0091 or dot 0091 and the reason why I titled this piece is simply because I was listening to um, uh, the song Prophet 6 oh you know what now I'm ooh <laughs> I should I should have written some better notes before doing this recording because now my head is everywhere and yeah so Prophet Six, who said Hoverphonic? Why, 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 why did I forget the band name? Okay, 
So Prophet 6-0091 is a song. Actually, Prophet 6-0091 is a lyric from the two wiki song by Hoover Phonic. It's a it's a very good song, very classic, iconic song. Way back in the early 2000s. Um and I was listening to this particular song when I started my sketch, <laughs> hence the reason why I titled it this piece. But part of the reason why I titled it this piece is because it's also a stand-in for a particular character in this particular composition. In this particular composition, one of the characters is a robot. It's not very obvious. You kind of have to like look into the composition itself. And speaking of the devil, <laughs> there's the robot right there. I'm actually doing a nice, you know, line sketch of the robot. You can see me do the robot right now. And I isolated them so that, you know, I could concentrate on them without having to, like, look at all the rest of the characters. But now that I have them down, I'm obviously going to do some edits on their uh positioning and then yeah i'm sketching out the rest of the characters and you can see that there's a robot in the composition not very obvious at the very beginning because you have this foreground character the the female at the very very front and she's kind of obfuscating the rest of the gang so it's not very clear that there's a robot there but there is a robot there so Anyways, the composition and slash narrative story that had developed in my head when I was doing this particular illustration slash photo study is that this robot is Prophet 6 0091. It's his nickname. No, he's not a prophet of any sort, and there's no religious thematic to this story in my head. It just so happens that they're testing this robot. So there's this field test of some sort together with this robot. They're prepping him. And his name just happens to be Prophet, Prophet 6-0091. So yeah, <laughs> this is the very, very complicated, very detailed narrative <laughs> that went on in my head when I saw this particular photo from MapCrunch. And it's always interesting when this thing happens sometimes when i do my paintings and i get inspired by a photo or like a particular uh lyric or a particular word you know it's either i see an image in my head or a fr or i hear a phrase in my head um but yeah, typically I see an image in my head. I typically don't really get a narrative story until I start developing the painting and illustration. And while I'm going through the illustration and doing the, the drawing process, all, all these ideas and thoughts just kind of percolate in my head while I'm painting. And so basically this kind of what happened when I started doing this particular photo study is that, hey, I saw this potential for a good narrative story. And it just so happens that I was lis listening to to Wiki by Hoover Phonic. And so I kind of just put two and two together and lo and behold, we have this really nice, cool looking illustration that has a nice little story that goes along with it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Wow, that was a very lengthy explanation as to the background of the story, which I didn't mean to do, but I always do. If you watch my videos, I always do this. I always talk a lot. But anyways, now that we've basically broken down where my idea came from, um, again, it's always such a great thing to talk about where ideas come from because sometimes my brain is blank and I'm just going with the flow and then something happens. Um, and sometimes I get an image in my head. And then that image in my head sometimes gets really, really carried away. And that's really what happened with this particular illustration is that I saw an image in my head. I didn't really have a story. But then once I started following through with the image in my head, all of a sudden, all this story just came about. So it was really kind of cool how things came about. So, yeah. But anyways, let's talk about the process because um, I haven't had the chance to talk about the process. So basically going back to what has happened in the screen before i first started things out with you know obviously important the photo 
onto Krita and I did a quick outline of the general shape of everything so I did a real quick sketch probably went on just for like a minute or two and then after that I did a, a semi detailed sketch on top of that that sketch probably just went on no more than 20 minutes tops I'm pretty sure maybe 30 minutes but definitely not 40 minutes I know that for sure I definitely didn't go for 40 minutes doing a doing a detailed sketch I knew that it was fairly quick for the most part um, and of course like the one I concentrated the most on is the part with the robot uh, which she saw me do because I pointed it out when I was sketching it out and then of course after I do that um, quick or a more detailed sketch I then lay out lay down my colors and if you guys have been watching some of my videos lately the majority of my colors I've been deriving from a color palette that I've gotten from color palette cinema I've limited myself down to about eight colors or so and I use it as a springboard for all my color comp or all my compositions basically in this particular instance though I didn't use the color palette cinema uh, palette I don't think I was using it at that time or even if I was using it at a time for some odd reason I decided to go off and used artistic color selector for this one which is a nice little feature in Krita uh, the artistic selector um, uses the gamut mask to basically like limit your color selection and it's such a great tool nifty tool the only thing that I don't like about it is the fact that it uses the RGB color wheel and unfortunately the RGB color wheel is not the standard uh, traditional color wheel I would have to say even though it is much more robust than tra the traditional color wheel the unfortunate thing about the RGB color wheel is that a lot of the classic uh, color compositions is not represented very well um, for example green is typically the analogous of um oh man i'm like losing my art terms right now uh, let me look up color schemes real quick um or not color schemes but color wheel uh color theory what? okay i think complementary I really do know this off the top of my head typically but for some odd reason my brain's not working today okay the term I was looking for is complementary so analogous typically means colors right next to each other and complementary typically means a color right opposite of you in the, the traditional color wheel red is typically opposite of green so typically red and green are the complementary colors in the RGB color wheel which you could see on the top right right now you can see that red is actually opposite of cyan and this is the reason why the RGB color wheel really threw me off for a period of about six to eight months maybe even close to like a year and a half I was using the artistic color wheel slash gamut mask tools in Krita and it's a great tools those are really great tools to help me limit my color uh, palette right because uh, limiting your color palette is always good it basically forces you to just concentrate on the basics and not get too bogged down by too many color choices right so i was using artistic color selector slash together with the gamut mask and it's such a great tool it's an awesome tool but again unfortunately I was using the RGB color wheel why because the traditional color wheel isn't really represented in in digital painting it's just not a common wheel <laughs> I don't know why I actually come to think of it I'm like thinking in my head why it's not why the traditional color wheel is not uh, used predominantly and I don't really know the reason for it I, I think it's very very technical uh, I know that the RGB color wheel is more uh, robust in terms of representing all the colors available 
Um, but again, like I said, it's just the color schemes. It, the color schemes it generates is just not very good. <laughs> Because, yeah, the traditional complementary colors are green and red, yellow, purple, blue, and orange. Unfortunately, with the RGB color wheel, that's not the case. And what's complementary green right now is pink. What's complementary of yellow is blue. And none of those colors are the right ones. So, you know, for, again, a period of eight months, so about a year and a half, I was doing all these color choices that were just wrong. <laughs> Because I was thinking that the RGB color wheel was the right color wheel until I finally figured it out. It was like, oh wait, it's not. The RGB color wheel is not the right color wheel traditionally, or not the traditional color wheel. Anyways, so yeah, um, I guess since I got into that subject already, I, I might as well talk about one of the things I don't like about this piece, one of the things I don't like about this piece is the colors. Why? Because the colors were off. <laughs> and now we know why, because I was using the RGB color wheel. So yeah, nowadays I started limiting myself to the color palette cinema simply just because it, it's, it, it traditionally goes with the traditional color wheel. A lot of the color scheme that you will find color palette cinema is very very much the traditional color schemes and so yeah um it helps me basically just limit myself to those colors you know and it's it's so much better too because using the color palette cinema i'm down to eight colors versus having like 30 or something right because when i was doing the gamut mask slash artistic color selector i had like about 30 color choices well with a color palette sitting in my palette, I'm just down to eight and that's it. I just use eight colors and just basically, you know, do my composition off, off of those eight colors. So anyways, uh, so yeah, <laughs> going back again to the process, I got sidetracked there talking about colors. Um, basically, I laid down my colors using the artistic color selector and gamut mask. I used a random mech brush to uh, I used a random mech brush to lay down my colors. I set the random mech brush to vary its hue a little bit so I could get a little bit more hues. And then when I lay down all my colors, I basically merge my outline sketch together with my color layers and just start smudging everything around. And the reason why I smudge everything around is so that I could get a base paint basically uh, the base paint is fuzzy the details are kind of wonky and basically what I use the base paint for is basically like the base layer of my painting it becomes uh, the bottom of my painting I basically do all my details on top of it right to develop the piece and whatnot so uh, I always do this with all my illustrations um, it's much better for me this way to have some form of colors down on the canvas instead of like coloring things piece by piece, which I used to do. That's what I would do, right? And I would do my outline and then my sketch and then my fine sketch. And then as soon as I had my fine sketch, I would, you know, slowly color things piece by piece, right? Uh, and I hated doing it that way or... I, I like doing it that way at first until I realized there was a much better way of doing things. And the, the better way of doing things is to have some form of colors already down on your canvas, even if it's fuzzy, even if it's, you know, not technically the right colors. It's just always better to have some form of colors, some form of values on your canvas rather than having it just pure white. It just makes you it makes seeing the final image in your head much clearer that way so yeah i basically uh evolved my practice to doing this you know where i have this base paint and i just started doing all my detailing on top of it which really is what i've been doing for the past few minutes i've actually begun the detailing process a few minutes ago uh, I obviously started with the background uh, and then I slowly went to the foreground, which is what I'm working on now. I'm working 
actually i'm still working on the ground actually so yeah i'm still working in the background still fine tuning the things on the ground and then after that i do believe i'm about to start on the plane start detailing the plane and after i detail the plane i'm going to be working on the character so yeah that's what we'll be watching in the next few minutes
Perfect. So I thought that these little details I'm adding onto the plane is very, very cool. Um, I basically had this thought in my head. Well, let me backtrack. Um, I, I've been very, very heavily inspired by Rococo slash Baroque period. I very, very much love um, their architecture uh, and their, well, for lack of a better term, garish nature. And uh, they have a lot of flourishes and whatnot in a lot of their architecture. And I've been trying to employ some of these uh, flourishes, this little Baroque Rococo design motifs in a lot of mechanical hard surface uh, design. So in this particular case, for example, I put it on uh, a plane and I've done this before in a robot, which actually kind of looks cool in a robot too. Kind of makes a robot look classy in a way. But in this particular case, I, I put some on the plane and uh, I thought that it would make it look super cool. But in this case, I don't think I pulled off the design very well. Um, the intention of it is there. Like it's kind of obvious that there's some form of flourishes there, some Baroque, Rococo. Uh, floral designs of some sort but since I didn't fully define it it just wasn't very apparent as to what they really are I guess uh, so yeah it, I guess you could say that this is one of my attempts at doing Rococo flourishes that just didn't work very well maybe if I develop this piece harder I, I can make this look way better than what it is now but as for now it's kind of like an eh design like I could seriously just discard the whole Rococo Baroque flourishes and it would just be as good as if, you know, they have it. So, but I do love the design though. I've employed it a lot in a lot of my design motifs and a lot of my illustrations. It's, it's just a very, very cool time period in architecture. So, yeah. But anyways, I'm still continuing with my detailing process. My detailing process is basically a three-step process. I basically delineate my edges, which basically means I make my edges sharper just so that my shapes read clearer. And then I accentuate my shadows, which basically means I add a little bit of darkening to my shadows if it needs darkening. And then I add highlights. So uh, in this particular case, though, the characters got too washed out because I you know, put way too much color dodge essentially and they just got too burnt out um, or too washed out. So in the end, I didn't really need to do a whole lot of highlighting on them just because, simply because they have quite a lot of highlights on there already. Um, and he here I am messing around with the hue and just testing things out. I knew that there was something off with the colors, but I couldn't figure out what was wrong with the colors. Value wise, it checked out. I mean, you just saw me did a value check right there. But as for the colors, I knew something was wrong, you know, and I couldn't figure it out. And it took me like a year and a half to figure out, oh, I totally used the wrong tools to come up with the color scheme for this particular illustration. So, yeah, um, it, it would have been such a much, it would have been a much better illustration if I had fixed the colors. But lo and behold, I just kept the colors as is, um, as I guess a tool to help us, you know, as, as a tool for me to talk about, or um, <laughs> what am I trying to say? I decided to just keep the colors as is, just simply because when I finished this particular painting, I thought that it was pretty much done, right? And then I was fairly content with it, not completely happy. I feel like it, a lot of things could still be edited with it, and I still feel that same way. But I knew that I also wanted this to just strictly be a speed paint, which is, like, I guess, part of the reason why I didn't develop this any farther was simply because I just wanted this to stay as a speed paint. So, yeah, all the garishness of the original colors are still there. Um, whether the piece is really bad looking, I don't know. I mean, it's all right. Color-wise, it's eh, obviously, I mentioned that enough, you know. 
But it's not like the the piece is like completely bad. I mean, it still works to a certain degree, obviously, you know. And really, I mean, it would take me just like five minutes to just edit the colors out, which I could and I should do. But, you know, for the sake of the lesson, I'm just keeping things as is, you know. It's just one of those things that's better left as is because, you know... A, it's kind of cool because a lot of mistakes are still there, you know. It's a great reminder for me of what not to do next time. And then just B, you know. It's still a nice, decent illustration by itself, honestly. I mean, it's not a bad illustration, honestly. It still works, you know. The whole narrative of the image is still intact you know the idea that this robot is about to go on some form of adventure is still there uh, and of course he has his gang with him so yeah honestly it's not that bad of an illustration aside from the colors that is so yeah but yeah this piece is almost done I'm almost putting down the final touches to this particular piece and now that I'm getting a good second look at all those characters, those characters are very, very well done for a speed paint. I gotta admit, <laughs> for me doing them very fast, they they worked out quite well. And I totally forgot I did all this color edits at the very end. So yeah, I did fix it up a little bit, kind of helped me fine tune the colors some more because I knew that there was just something so wrong with the colors. The one thing I didn't do though is I, I don't remember if I did a curve edit at the very end because a curve edit would have helped unify this painting a whole lot. So yeah, well that's a lot more unified than it used to be. So yeah, it does look way better. I did do a, a curve edit. Here I am doing a curve edit. What am I doing to blue, bro? <laughs> Sorry, it's just been a while since I've seen this. This is totally interesting to watch. But yeah. Alright, now that I did those color edits, they do look a lot better. Way better than what I was looking at. <laughs> so, But yeah, totally cool that I did this piece way back in the day. Ooh, and I highlighted the plane to make it look more reddish. So if it would pop out more. That was cool. All right, this is the end of the illustration. Thank you guys for watching it with me. I hope that you guys did learn a thing or two from it. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.